for a demonstration of the first lesson. Mm -hmm. Have you had any Alexander over this before? No. no. I just heard it from um, a colleague I used to work with, Del, so she just said a little bit about it. Yeah. But no, I've never had any. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Good. So you're totally clean of ideas. Have you yes. read about it? Just a little bit, um, but not, I, again, I have to tell you about it. Really. Great. That's a good start. Uh, before we, we go into the practical work, have you got any aches or pains or any particular reason that Alexander may be interesting for you? Um, a little bit lower back pain. Um, I do a bit of yoga and a little bit of wrist pain. So I think yes. those are kind of my main um, aim in the moment. But yeah. it's only in the last maybe two months. And is the wrist pain and the back pain getting a bit worse over time? The wrist pain is definitely getting a lot worse. Yeah. I think when I'm sitting and when I'm in a particular posture, my lower back pain can get a lot more yes. painful. But I think when I put any weight through this, it becomes quite painful. Or sometimes even right it can be quite painful. Yes. Is that a lot of mousing, do you think? It could be, but I think it might be also got to do with uh, yoga and the way through it. Oh, right. So have you been advised not to wait there through the through the wrist? There's been no advice yet because I haven't looked for it, so okay. no at all. Right. Yeah. So let's see where we go today. What's going to happen is I'm going to demonstrate the first lesson with you, take you through the ropes. Essentially it'll be very practical. I'll be moving you with my hands and guiding you. And you can ask questions whenever you want. Uh, any interesting sensations, let me know. Okay. And um, yeah, feel free to stop me at ten points and tell me something interesting if it happens or confusing. If you don't understand something, feel free to ask. And you know, we'll start with movement and I'll take you through the ropes. All okay. right, good. So what we'll do is we'll start you standing here and you can look out of the window over there. Maybe at that angle so you've got a nice view of the trees. Okay. If it's a little bit wider apart. Come back a little bit to the, to the stool. Great. Okay. So the first thing that's going to happen is I'm going to move you, I might move your head, and I might move, might move your arms. Mm -hmm. And your role, your job is to let me move you without helping you very much. As much as possible, let me do the movements. And if you do help me, it doesn't really matter. But I'm, I'm responsible for initiating the movement. So as simple as that. You see how I'm moving your head at the moment? Have you come in with any aches and pains today? Anything in your lower back? So not this morning, but still some wrist pain, yeah. And that's ongoing even though you're not doing anything with the wrist, it still hurts in the wrist, does it? Um, well, I've stopped doing yoga the last month yes. to see if that made a difference, but I'm still going to the gym and using that wrist. Right, yeah. yes. Put your feet a little wider for that. Okay, I'm going to move your head a bit further to the right, and I'm going to move your head up, and now I'm going to move it down, and in a way it doesn't really matter where the head is in space. But your neck is getting progressively freer as I'm moving your head around. And now I want you to take your hips backwards and go towards the chair and bend your knees. That's fine. And as you get to the chair, stop there for a while. I'm going to move you backwards. And now I'm going to move you forwards. You can see that I'm, I'm moving you, and you're simply allowing me to move you. You're not initiating your movement, so I'm doing it all for you. Mm -hmm. So I'm moving you forwards again, and you're not getting ready to get out of the chair because I'm taking you. Back again. A lot of this work is about not preparing. There's a lot of preparation we do with effort and strain. So right now, you're treating the coming forwards just the same as coming backwards. Can you see that? Yeah. But you're not coming forwards to get all ready to get out of the chair. You're just forwards. 
There's no stress involved in coming forwards. There's no stress involved in coming backwards. There's no stress involved in coming forwards. And now, you can stand up with your heels, stand up out of the chair, and there was no stress in coming out of the chair. No. In other words, sitting, standing, moving, talking, walking, computing, doing sports, playing a musical instrument can all be done in a very quiet and undisturbed way as long as the brain is in the right gear. And what you're learning in Alexander is to get your brain into the right gear where whatever you do in the day doesn't hurt, doesn't cause disturbance, doesn't cause stress or strain, doesn't interfere with healthy functioning. Now again, take your hips backwards as you bend the knees. When you get to the stool, wait there for a while, and then stand up again. And then bend the knees. Mm -hmm. As I said, any questions that come in about what you're learning, or not learning, let them know. And now I'm going to take your forwards and stop. You sense then there was a little bit of an idea of I'm about to stand. Yeah. Did you feel that? Yeah. And how did you know that there was an idea of going to stand and kicking in? What did it do to your body? I think it kind of tensed it a little bit. Yeah. So I think I felt like exactly. I needed to come forward. Exactly. Yeah. You just showed us very, very well. Yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't know at the minute if I'm meant to be closing my eyes or if I'm meant to be closing oh, my okay. eyes. Oh, okay, good question. So at the moment, just look around the room as if it's a normal everyday. Okay. The only difference is that I'm here doing funny stuff. Okay. But no, there's nothing you need to do in any way different to if you're sitting on your own somewhere. But the thing you noticed was of critical importance. Probably the most important thing you will understand about Alexander, which is when you're about to prepare to get out of the chair, you threw your head backwards and then squashing into the spine and the spine went into a bit of a compression. So um, is it that you're meant to keep yourself aligned? Not aligned, no. although it may seem like that. The, the spine is a beautiful curve, mm -hmm. but more about being still, not being disturbed. So that's a level of adrenaline, of, of strain and stress. Mm -hmm. So it's not so much you have to keep yourself in a line, because that wouldn't do anybody any good. But to avoid the preparation, and the preparation is a stressor. Right. It strains the neck, it strains the shoulder, it strains the the, uh, the spine, and all the path, the nerve pathways that go through it. It disturbs the breath, mm -hmm. pumps adrenaline and cortisol into the system, stress hormones. So when there's an absence of that, you're in a better condition, which means the postural patterns are in a better condition. But you don't have to keep anything straight or alive. So if we do it again, and I can manage to prevent you from preparing, from straining and stressing and preparing, and simply take you forwards, that's it. And now it doesn't matter where the head is, you can see that you're not preparing to stand. Can you see how you haven't run into that jump? Mm -hmm. So right yeah. now you haven't jumped, you're just coming forwards. And you haven't jumped. And even now you're not even worrying or thinking about how, how, how can you get out of the stool. Mm -hmm. You're just there, you haven't prepared. You're not getting ready, and then stand up with the heels, and then you bend the knees again. Yeah. And then heels, and then bend the knees again. You drop your arms, and then again heels, and then bend the knees, and then heels. That's it. And what's the difference between that quality of movement and when you just prepared before? I think it's. I'm not putting as much strain forward and Correct. kind of jumping forward and moving everything. Moving everything, that's right. A lot of you remain very still, even though you're coming forwards in space, you weren't disturbing and distorting yourself. So you remain very smooth. Stand up with your heels and bend your knees. That's it. Heels. So you could say, oh well, the difference is the shape of your neck and back. But mm. even more importantly, it's the quality of your brain. Mm. It's not jumping. It's not jumping ahead of itself. It's not snatching into the future, into the chair or out of the chair. Yeah? Mm -hmm. It's staying still. It's staying undisturbed. And that's really what you learn in the Alexander technique, to remain undisturbed 
not stressed, not preparing, mm. not hyper vigilant, ready for the next emergency in everyday life situations. And stay relaxed. Stay relaxed, stay mm. chill, stay relaxed in everyday life. So it's not so much about an, an alignment of the body, but much more about the condition of the mind, which then conditions the body mm. into a very, very different smoothness and feeling. Now I'm going to take you onto your toes. So take your toes into the ground. Up you come there. And you can see from that movement, come down to the heels, and then onto the toes again. You're coming onto your toes, down to the heels, and there's no disturbance in you. Mm. Your brain is staying in a certain gear. Go onto your toes again. Yes, and then down to the heels. And onto the toes again. That's it. And then down to the heels. And stop. And then you can take your hips backwards and bend the knees. And let the stool stop. Wait. And stand up with the heel. And then bend the knees again. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter if you come this way over to the left, it doesn't matter if you're over to the right. The body can go anywhere it wants to go. That's it. And I'll take you forwards again. And can you see that the forwards and the backwards is the same thing for your mind and body? Mm -hmm. You're not more disturbed coming forwards and preparing mm -hmm. than when you're coming backwards and nothing's happening. So you're coming forwards even though you're not standing, but you're not preparing with the neck and jaw and face. Can you get an idea of that? Yeah. And you're not preparing as you're coming back because there's nothing to prepare for. You're not putting the brakes on, getting ready, you're throwing your chin forwards and snatching with the head, mm -hmm. compressing into the spine. You're not doing any of that. And I'll take you forwards and stop. And I'm going to use my hands to prevent you from getting ready or preparing or making an effort out of standing. Stand up with the heels. Great. And it doesn't matter where the, where the head is in space. Now the head can even be there in a funny angle. Not even aligned at all, bend the knees. That's fine. And then stall and stop. And then stand up. And bend the knees. And then heels. And bend the knees again. And heels. Yes. How do you experience the quality of the movements at the moment, heels? There's a lot more emphasis going on just below the hips. Correct. If you like. So, what, what part of your body is working? Just the legs. Yeah, your legs are working because that's the part of your body that's designed to walk you, sit you, and stand you. And what isn't working so much? What parts of your body are doing much less than they would do more? It's kind of a little bit less strain on, on my head moving and my neck and yeah. my my back. As Correct. Well. Yeah. So if you get any back pain, it's usually because the back's doing stuff it's not designed to do. Mm. It's not designed to make an effort when you're sitting in a chair, when you're sitting standing, when you're moving. It's designed to stay like it is right now, which is expanding, lengthening, and also widening. That's its design. So Alexander described this whole sequence in a number of sentences. And his original sentences to describe this condition was allowing the neck to be free, which allows the head to be forwards and up, which allows the back to lengthen and allows the back to widen. In other words, in this condition of freedom in the neck, the head poised on top of the spine nicely, and the back in an expansive and lengthening and widening mode. Now, then you move. Yeah, that's it. And you can see, yes, your legs got you into the chair. And then wait there. And you're not doing anything in your neck. Nothing's happening in the lower back. Stand up with the heels, and then bend the knees, and heels, and heels. And you can do this a thousand times, and it wouldn't hurt your back. You get a sense of that. So yeah. Bend the knees. It's a quality of fluidity and ease. Bend the knees, and then stand up again, 
and then walk around a little bit. Yeah. And then you walk around again, then you walk to the mirror and back again, and then back to the school. Yeah. Yeah. And then back over here? Yes, and then back to looking out of the window. Put your feet wide apart again. What's your sense of yourself in walking? I don't know what you mean. So, what, what did it feel like to walk, walk like that with very little happening in the back and, and more happening in the legs? I think initially I was concentrating on just my legs moving and yes. relaxing. Yes. But then I think I returned back to my normal walking when I walked back to the stool. So. Yeah. So you, you've raised a very important point about Alexander, which is the habits do kick in again. And the whole of the technique is about learning to prevent habits from kicking in mm -hmm. as, a, as a new habit. The habit of not doing the stuff on the neck and the jaw when you're mm -hmm. computing. Right, well, if you're going to hit a match point in tennis, you don't have to use your neck and shoulders and back. You can follow through very, very little happening mm. in the neck and back and jaw. Okay, let me move it forwards. Let it stop. Now I'm going to move it backwards. But habits do kick in. And uh, we've all got certain habits of reaction, habits of strain, and habits of stress. And as a result of having Alexander work, the habits start to get softer and softer and you find yourself sitting, standing, walking without the familiar habitual strains that we normally do at the same time as these activities. So like for instance, if you're used to habitually to, to snatch your head backwards and push your chin forwards and strain your back, especially your lower back, mm -hmm. you find yourself just being like lengthening and widening your back that's it, now you can stand up with the heels without doing anything at all, bend the knees. Okay. And stand up with the heels, and then bend the knees again. And then heels, that's it, and then bend the knees. And then heels, that's it. Now I'm going to walk with you this time, walk around the room. Alexander teacher's job is to use hands to prevent you doing anything habitual that causes strain and stress in the body. So I'm using my hands here to say, don't get ready for sitting. Don't start jamming the brakes on in your leg. And don't rush into the chair in a way that would strain you and shorten the back. Okay, bend your knees again. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take an arm. So I've got all the weight of the arm, mm -hmm. and you're leaving it alone. Mm -hmm. so your arm can move. This is important for computing, but actually when most people sit at a computer, there's a lot of stuff going on in the neck, mm -hmm. which can feed through into a squashing of a nerve pathway that goes all the way through. And it can interfere mm -hmm. with, with, the, with the wrist. It can be narrowing the carpal tunnel, there can be all sorts of things going on. You can get pins and needles through, through to the fingers. But when everything's working nicely in the neck and back, and you can just do things with, with your hands and your arms without disturbing your neck and back, you'll find it will be a lot easier. And I would guess that your wrist would quieten down significantly. And I don't usually give advice, but I would say in the meantime, while it's sensitive, I wouldn't weight bear on it too much in yoga. Just give it a chance of settling down. Because if it is inflamed, then I think weight bearing, they're not designed to be weight bearing really through shoulders and weight bearing through hips, mm -hmm. not four legged. So I'd say just minimise. It's okay normally to have some moments of using the hands for push ups in certain yoga postures, that's fine. Mm -hmm. It's unsafe if there's an inflammation going on and already some irritation. Um, have a little break for a while from, from those activities. <coughs> And then move forwards. That's fine. And it's not about speed. This can be very quick. It can be very slow. So as I'm moving backwards and forwards, you see that your brain hasn't rushed ahead into this is where I'm going to stand. 
yeah. that you're still here, you haven't started to prepare, mm -hmm. you just forwards. And you're still not preparing, and stand over the heels. That's fine. And then bend the knees over the toes. Fine. And then stand over the heels again. And then bend the knees again. And then stand over the heels again. That's fine.
you get yourself set to go on the table. Yes, you get your head. Yes, you get that's right. You'll have your head over here. Okay. And I'll be on the back. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and I'll, I'll help you down. So you get yourself into the centre of the table. That's mm -hmm. it. And come back another few inches. Just like table, just like the chair work, and I'm doing with you, it's the same again. I'm still responsible for moving you, and you're going to let me move you. Capacity to surrender, being controlled, into that nature. 
way. What does it mean that's in the Qi way? It means that's in the breath, normalized. That's in the digestion, settled. That's in the back, drop into gravity, lengthen and widen. That's in the mind, quieten down. That's in the circulation, do what it wants to do. That the postural mechanisms harmonize themselves. That's in the eyes, quieten down from overly focusing. That's in the jaw, release. Surrendering to deep biology, to the way that you're designed to be and not fight it with effort and ambition and strain. And so there's a great value in this learning to surrender, and not at the table for this stuff. Is you consciously experiencing and developing the capacity not to be in control for you. Mm -hmm. And the, the paradox is when you control less, you get healthier. Mm -hmm. You get freer. But actually, rather than control freedom, so I'm in control, actually, when one is in conflict with the mind. And when things are working well, there's a harmony between the body and the mind. So this surrender is a mind-body surrender. It's a surrender of over control. And the knees of the postural mechanisms, along with all the other functions. How easy is it to surrender?
very, very interesting question about why such a part of human nature to be in control. Have you got any thoughts on that? Any ideas? Uh, we're all control theories. What's, what's so difficult about not being in control? Or surrendering to you, as we say. Mm -hmm.